The book of Joel is being revealed right now. He says, call for the elders. Call for those people in the church. Come down to the house of God and get yourself in a place of fasting and, and repent. Because the day of God is nigh at hand. It's a day of gloominess, of darkness. Read it. I want to show you a video tonight. It's an awesome little video. A little short snippet, but it's powerful. And I'm telling you, you know, most people listen to me. Most Christians don't even know what time it is. Did you know that? They don't even know what time it is. They think everything's going to go as it has been. It ain't. Everything's fixed to become a... It's going to all come apart. It ain't going to remain as it is. And they don't even know what time it is. They don't even read the Bible and they don't look around. They, you know, <clears throat> we need to look and we need to study. We need to know what time it is. For one thing, it's time to repent. For another thing, it's time. Listen to me. It's time that the Lord is about to return. You know what? I was telling the Lord yesterday, I was driving down here, and I said, Lord, this is the most exciting time of my life. I am so wound up, I can't stand it. And other people were saying, I'm so scared, I can't stand it. God Almighty, if why couldn't I have been born at another time? Things that are coming on the planet, you know, the Bible says because of the things that are coming on the planet, men's hearts will fail them for fear. And I'm over there going, God, you know what? I, I'm just praying. I'm saying, Lord, you, you know, I, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but I really don't care anymore. I said, Lord, you know what? I pray that I be counted worthy and my family be counted worthy to escape all those things that are coming on this planet. Did you know Jesus told you to pray that? You say, well, I didn't think we were going to go through anything on this planet. Well, you need to think twice. Maybe you need to think three times. He wouldn't have said that unless you were going to endure some stuff. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. What are you going to endure? Well, time will tell. I'm telling you this morning, you need to get your spiritual life in order. Let me say it again. You need to get your spiritual life in order just like I need to. Listen, we're not, none of us are above any, anyone else. We all need what I'm telling you. I need it first. You know what? God came to me and He says, Get your house in order, boy. It's time. And I believe Him. I believe it's time that I get my house in order. And I ain't got my house totally in order, but He's going to help me. How many of you know He's faithful? I believe we can trust God, don't you? I believe I can trust Him. If you don't have anything, God will come through. He's, he's faithful. He can help us. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 6, the Bible says, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Did you know that faith pleases God? Yeah. How many of you know faith pleases God? Come on, help me. Faith pleases God. Now let's get off this thing. Let's just, let's just take our time and let's repent. And let's develop in faith. Come on. Let's build our faith. Let's, let's go into, let's, let's take Jude chapter 1 for real and begin to pray in tongues and seek God. Worship God. Take some time out of your busy day and say, you know what? I ain't too busy for that. I guarantee you it'll change your life. And I, I guarantee you, you know what? Uh, I've always said, Lord, help me be compassionate. And I found myself, I was everything but compassionate. Come on, help me here. I was everything but compassionate. That's the truth. No compassion at all. My attitude, well, you know what? They're smart enough they had brought it on themselves. Let them, let them take care of their own business. But you know what? We need to have compassion on people. And I found out that as soon as I started seeking the Lord and begin to change what I thought in, in, in my life and the things in my life, God began to help me. And I'm going, you know what? I need to pray for those people. I need to pray for those people. They need help. They need help. They don't need my criticism. They need help. By the way, those who criticize... And complain, you know where they are? They're way on the outskirts of the camp. Way out there. Read, uh, I think it's Numbers 11. Find out. The complainers were way out on the edge of the camp. Who was in the middle? The tabernacle, Jesus. They had a long ways from him. Trying to help you this morning. I quit, I, I, I'm trying to quit complaining. Even though I haven't completely quit. I'm trying. To, you know, I believe the Lord will help you if you want to change. You don't want to change, forget it. He'll never help you. Because you don't want it. I'm seeking the Lord and saying, God, I desire a change. I want to walk in, I want to walk in compassion. And I want to walk in faith. How many of you want to walk in faith? I do. I want to walk in faith. I want to walk in this faith. I want to trust God. 
I believe this morning that if you have a right heart and you trust God, He'll pull you through everything. I do. You may go through hell, but you're going to make it. You'll make it. I like what Jimmy Schreiter used to say. He said, you know what? God will pull you through if you stand the pull. Sometimes it feels like you're getting pulled in too, but you know what? God will pull you through. He's big enough, He's smart enough, and He's able. I believe that. Faith pleases God, and I want to walk with Him. Amen. The Bible says concerning... Uh, uh, can't remember his name. All of a sudden, his name just left me. But he was he was not for God. Took him. Just Enoch. Just took him. There he goes. Let me ask you a question. I want, I want to get into this. I want to quit with it just a minute. We can trust God, can't we? Because He's faithful. He's always faithful. But this is a, this is a big question. I want to, I want to ask you because I got to thinking about this the other day and begin to contemplate on this because the opposite of faith is fear. Did you know that? The opposite of faith is fear. So the opposite of trust is fear, right? Because trust and faith are the same. Let me ask you this question. We can trust God, but can we trust each other? Huh? What do you think? Can we trust each other? How godly are you? Can you be trusted? I'm just asking a question. You know, um, that's why I put my money in this church, because I trust it. That's the reason I come to this church, because I trust it. Are you listening? Well, I trust it. I trust the people that are here. Now, I'm not saying you're perfect, but I trust you. You say, well, yeah, but... I've seen this, this, and this, and that, and the other that I didn't like. Well, I'm sorry. You find me the perfect church, and I'll go there. But until you do, I ain't going there. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to trust these people. How many of you can throw your trust in with each other? Come on, help me here. Can we trust each other, or are we just a big fake, and we don't trust one another? We can trust God. I know we can trust God, but can we trust each other? Are you going to turn and stab me in the back? Or am I going to turn and stab you in the back? Let love be without dissimulation. Don't be a hypocrite. Let's be real. Listen, I'm not perfect and neither are you. There ain't nobody in here perfect. And you know what? I'm going to fail you probably. And you're probably going to fail me. Because unfortunately we are human. That's just the bottom line. But the facts are, we've got to come to a place. Listen to we got to come to a place among us where we can trust one another. And we got to be able to say, I can depend on one another. If I ask someone, the Kelly was chewing me out, this is not chewing me out. But she's reminding me of something this morning. She said, you remember when uh, Cody, and Rand, uh, Cody and Hannah were here? And I said, yeah. She said, do you remember you asked them very point blank, give me somebody to pray for? I said, yeah, I remember that. She said, what were their names? And I said, dude, I don't remember that's sad, ain't it? <laughs> Come on. I said, oh yeah, one of them's name was Grace. What was the other one? She said, George. She said, have you prayed for him? Because I remember Cody, he said out of his mouth, he said, if you're not going to pray, I'm not going to tell you their name. Remember that? So you know what I did? I came to the church right then, and I wrote their names down. I put them right where I could see them. Because I'm going to start praying for them. People. i never seen them in my life. Probably never will. But I'm going to pray for them because God knows. See, can you? Can, he said that because he trusted me to pray for him. So I will. From now on, I promise you, I'll pray for him. You know what I did the other day? I know you're going to hate me for this, but I'm sorry. I told myself the other day, I said, even though I don't like it, and I don't want to, and I can't really stand it, I'm going to pray for President Obama. Because he needs prayer. If there's anybody that needs to be born again, he does. Can you imagine if he got born again? Ooh, that would be fantastic. You see, I don't even have time to pray for him. Hey, I felt the same way. But I remember, <laughs> I remember the night he got elected. Can I, let me just tell you this. I remember the night he got elected, I started to cry. And I don't know what I cried about. I don't even know why I was crying. But I remember when he was declared the winner, I began to weep and cry. 